Hello guys and welcome to the video where I will show you how to create a working project with the, the STM32 Cube IDE and Touch GFX integration. Um, the first thing we have to do is go to File and New and select the STM32 project and then it will initialize the target selector here. And since I have a 746 board, so I'm going to just select this here and then double click this one and press Next. And then here it's uh, very important to select the targeted language as C++ because TouchGFX is uh, written in C++. So if we don't choose this here, then the project won't be able to compile. And uh, we can just write a name here, Video Guide 2. Yes, I already tried once. And then press Finish. And then we'll ask, be asked to initialize all peripherals in the default mode. And yes, we would want that. And yes, we will change the cube mx perspective i know that the touch gfx guys have made a video just like this a couple of uh, months ago but um, we can do some shortcuts um, and make this a bit quicker and also they have a very very small font um, due to a problem in the video i guess but um, maybe we can do it a li little bit quicker here so now we have initialized uh, the stm uh, board the dev kit um, I have this uh, a disco board called uh, F746 uh, and uh, this is the default mode. So what we need to do is to go to the middleware and to the graphics here. And then we have to select uh, the touch GFX. Uh, display interface will be this LTDC and the only pin we need to modify is uh, the reset pin of the of the display and it's available on the platform settings here and you can see um, it's uh, we have to select the right one and for this board here it's the uh, PI12 and uh, that's about it there's one more thing I'm going to do here because we only get one shot at the moment because the cube IDE uh, overrides a lot of settings so if we go back and re uh, recompile the code uh, from the IOC file, we will get a lot of settings overwritten. So we only get one shot at configuring the hardware. They are working on this uh, pretty hard, I guess. But uh, but until then, we'll have to have to make sure that all the hardware is configured the right way uh, the first time. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need the uh, the COM6, the uh, the sixth UART. So if I go under the connectivity here and I go to UART six and uh, the, the only thing I'm going to enable is the USAT 6 global interrupt here. And I'm going to do a video later on where I can show you how to implement a ring buffer, uh, because apparently that's not available in the hardware abstraction layer files. But um, I'll get more into depth about that later. Just suffice for now that we have this global interrupt enabled, because then we have the files and the, uh, the functions generated for us. So uh, this is the first and the thing we do. We configure the, the 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 hardware this is the connectivity and we have configured the the graphics to use the touch gfx so um now we will try to build this i just click over here and then i can right click and say build project and it, i'm getting asked to do you want to generate code and uh, i can uh, click here remember my, my decision and then say yes so right now I'm generating the, the base code um, and it will generate a lot of errors because the touch GFX files that it's uh, expecting are not there yet. So uh, it generates the core files and let's see here, the console says a lot of stuff about the touch GFX uh, not uh, initialized yet on no such file and, and directory. So we go back into in here and go to uh, to the touch GFX and under touch GFX here. Um, what's important to notice is that I've already installed the touch GFX uh, and I, and so so the executable name here is already set. But if it's not, you have to to set this. You have to point it at the touch GFX executable. And have, when you have done that, you can just press execute here, and then the touch GFX designer starts up. Uh, looks like this. 
here. And then it says error during code generation down here. So if we go to browse code here, we can see we, we get a, a folder open where the TouchGFX project is, is living. And if we open this, uh, the TouchGFX project file, and just let's edit that with, uh, with Notepad, we can see. So this is, uh, first of all, this is uh, the file that contains all our design. But down here it says post generate command. So it tries to compile the project, but um, it, it fails. Uh, and this is the post generate command that, that, that does that. So we can just write um, something else. Um, I'll just write the same thing that the, the TouchGFX guys uh, write, echo test. So when this command is, is uh, run, it will just write test in the console. I'll save this and go back to the, the designer. And then it says project was modified externally. Do you want to reload the project? Yes, we want to do that. We just close this uh, TouchGFX again. So now I have a blank TouchGFX project and I can just put uh, an image in here. And uh, we'll just use uh, this white background, it's fine. Put a button on it like this. Uh, and I will do another screen with another image. Uh, there's one dark and then another button here. And just uh, as in the original uh, video, I will create an interaction for this button here. Uh, when the button is clicked, I will uh, change screen. I will change the screen to here. I will have a nice sliding transition. And that's that. And on the other screen here, when I click this button here, I will add another interaction when button is clicked. Uh, change screen to screen one and transition slide. And I will do it west here. So now I have a, a trend, an interaction. This is not a guide on how to do touch GFX design. And I will not uh, go into details with that because there are a lot of other people that does that do that way better than me. But I can press generate code up here. And you can see down here in the left corner, it said code generation complete. So now we have a working code and we you can even run the simulator now here. So I get a simulator window here and if I press this, I can go back and forth just like the original example. Uh, so now I have the touch GFX code and I can go back to the, the cube IDE. Back in the cube IDE, we will need to uh, try to build this and uh, see how it goes. As the the original video also states that uh, we will still have a lot of errors at this point, um, and that is uh, coming from the simulator files in the Touch GFX designer being included in this build and uh, cube IDE not being able to cope with those files. So let's see here. Um, we will have to go into uh, to the files here and in touch GFX uh, we'll find um, a folder called simulator. We will right click on this one and go to properties and then we can go to uh, let's see here uh, C plus C slash C plus plus build and then select exclude resource from build and press apply uh, apply and close. Yes, that's the same thing. And we will also need to go into the middlewares, the ST touch GFX. You can also see there's a small red cross here, framework. And we will go to source and platform uh, and hell. And then we have the simulator here, uh, simulator properties again, exclude from build, apply and close. And let's try and build this again. We'll get a bit further down. I still think we need to exclude something. Maybe not. So far so good. Oh yeah, there's still one thing here. In the include platform HAL simulator. 
let's see here. Uh, let's say we can just exclude. Oh, I exclude the whole simulator folder here. Say properties exclude from build line close. Let's try and rebuild this one again. We still need to uh, to find uh, a file that we need to exclude. So the file we need to exclude is located under source, platform, and driver and touch. And this is called the STL2 touch controller. So we, we still got the ST1232 touch controller with which is the actual chip on the board. So we don't want to exclude that. We just right click on the STL2 touch controller, go to properties and select exclude resource from build apply and close and let's have another go at it well it looks promising Yes. So now we have just one warning. That is a warning coming from the, the free archers. So we cannot do anything about that. At least not at the moment. Um, so now we have a working project. Um, we should be able to right click and then say debug as an STM32 MCU application. Let's see here. And we select the debugger. The, I got the ST link uh, on the board attached. And then we just press OK. It will rebuild the project, of course. Uh, and then it will try and um, it will say, I want to switch perspective, which is fine at this point. Uh, it will write the internal memory um, and verify, of course. And then with a little bit of luck, we should be having a breakpoint at the main. Let's start this. Uh, apparently, I forgot something. Oh, yeah. Um, I was a bit quick on shutting this down. Um, so, what we'll see when we debug this is that I can press the debug again, it will uh, rebuild the project, and Let's go to the, the, the main breakpoint. Um, we'll just wait for the, yes, we'll switch. We will go to the to the breakpoint and uh, wait for the start here. And uh, I don't have a camera that can show you the screen of the, the dev kit right now, but I can show you, or I can tell you what will happen is that we will have a delay of about 10 seconds before anything happens on the screen. So um, now we're at the main breakpoint and I'll hit uh, resume there and we can just start counting there's still just white blank on the screen nothing in ha is happening but the program isn't running so what is going on here there now i got the the button that i want to to show uh that just hit stop right here so there are two problems right now and the first one is that uh, our ethernet connection is waiting for a dhcp uh, to give it an address which is it is not going to get because it's not connected to Ethernet. So if your application doesn't need Ethernet, you can simply uh, just disable this MX underscore ETH uh, underscore init because then we don't initialize the Ethernet connection and we don't have to wait for a DHCP server to give us an IP address we don't need. So I can just really quick need uh, really quick uh, press uh, debug again here and then I'll have a chance to. Um, Put a checkbox in that. Uh, remember my decision when which switches when it switches the perspective. Maybe. Yes. Remember my decision. Switch. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we we downloading this again. I'll just quick try and uh, see if we can bring down the waiting time. 
So this was one of the comments in the original YouTube video. How come that? And of course, it's not applicable to all boards, but maybe have a go through all the initialization uh, routines here and see if one of them is stalling your boot time. So we can just press go here and yes, I'll see a button immediately. So that's the main screen I'll see. The other thing that I mentioned, uh, the second thing I was going to mention is that we don't have a working touch controller. So right now the touch interface is not responding because we haven't loaded the driver for the touch, uh, touch controller chip. So that's the next thing we are going to do. So the first thing we need to do is to go to the source folder and find this uh, touch controller.cpp file here. And we need to allow the, the sample touch uh, code here to be available like this. And also here we need to initialize the touch screen. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to do. So now we have enabled the, the sample touch and the controller initialization, but still we haven't loaded the drivers. They are not copied by the cube IDE. So what we need to do is to go to the STM32 cube repository fo uh, folder. And uh, inside that, um, I have the firmware uh, 1.15 in the drivers folder here uh, in the BSP folder we have um, let me just bring up the other uh, this is uh, the workspace folder here so what we need to uh, copy here is that the STM32 746G discovery we just com copy the whole uh, folder like this and also the components folder here uh, now we have drivers for everything, um, but let's clean out a bit. So in the STM32 folder, you will need to delete everything else but the STM32746G discovery C and H file, and then the touchscreen, the underscore TS file. You can delete the manual and the release notes as well. So you will only have four files left here. And if we go back to the components folder, you should delete everything so you have the common folder and the FT5336 folder left. That is uh, all the, the folders you need here. So we will need to go to, uh, to our project. I'll just collapse these a bit. Uh, and now I will right click and go to properties. And in these properties, I will find uh, the uh, C slash C plus plus general and I will find the topic or what do you call it bullet point here or tab is probably the right word path and symbols and I will go to source location and I will press add folder here and I will select the um, oh I'll just press cancel and go back out we need to refresh the project they just cancel everything hit F5 here and then we'll get the components uh, and the STM 32 746 folder here as well so back inside here, uh, source location add folder, and we will want to add the um, the STM32 uh, discovery, and we will also add the components. You can see in components we have the, the driver files, like this. Going over to the includes tab here, we will need to include or add here. Um, from the workspace, we will need to add in uh, the component folders here. So we'll need to add the common folder like this and also add the FT5336 folder like this. Okay. On the C++ tab here, we need to add uh, from the workspace, we need to add the STM32 uh, folder. Uh, folder and press OK, and then press uh, Apply and Close here. Uh, no, we don't want to rebuild it now, but because up here in the in the touch controller, we need to include um, the STM thirty two seven four six G underscore discovery. Uh, underscore ts.h so that is a touchscreen uh, driver that we just uh, included in the build and now we should be able to 
build everything again. Let's see. And with a little bit of luck, we should complete the build in a short while. And there we have it. Let's try and debug this. Downloading into the controller. Internal memory verifying and we should hit the main breakpoint in a short while there so download verified i'll press go to start up and yeah i know you can't see it but the system is working so now we have a working um development system in the cube ide with touch gfx running thank you for watching